All right, so here we are in my P5 web editor. I've got a brand new sketch. I'm going to go ahead and give this a name. And we'll need to upload our crops. So I'll make a new folder. And just upload those six crops that I made. OK, now I'm going to set up a state machine in my code, doing this almost exactly the same way that I did in the state machine demo video. So just doing one big conditional statement, testing for each of the six total states. And so we're starting with zero, so I would only go up to five, and that gives me six total. And I'd like to control the navigation from one state to another using keyboard presses. And specifically, uh, I'd like to tie these to the arrow keys so that I can sort of have a direction of travel from one state to another. So I'm going to bring up the reference. And I'm looking for that key pressed function. So I can do a search from the top. And I can see here in the description, I have this key code system variable. And that's keeping track of which key is being pressed for keys that don't have a letter or a number assigned to them. So since I'm looking for the arrow keys, I want to look for when this key code system variable is equal to the left arrow or right arrow. So let's jump back to the code here. So within key pressed, I can have a conditional that says if key code equals right underscore arrow, then I'll have my block for what to do when that right arrow is being pressed. And I can do an else if and test for whether the key code is equal to the left arrow. So now I can use these two different parts of the conditional to either go one direction or another through my states. And if I'm using linear, I could just go up or down in the sequence. I haven't quite decided what uh, sort of order I'm going to keep my states in yet, but this will give me some nice options for when I get to that stage of my coding. So I've got the framework of my different states in draw. I've got the framework of my interaction in key pressed. Let's go ahead and set up my images. And just for consistency's sake here, I'm going to start these actually with image zero. But of course, I could name these whatever I like. And since we've got six images, uh, they're not super big in terms of file size. Let's go ahead and see if I can right click here and see how large this is. So 41 kilobytes, that's very small. Um, it still might be a good idea anyway to use a preload function just to make sure that they're all loaded up in the browser before our sketch starts. And that way we won't get any lag when we're switching from one image to the next. So we can use this function preload, and this actually runs before setup. So it's similar to setup in the sense that it only runs once at the beginning of the program, but it runs before setup runs. So we can make sure that we load in all of our images. And we're just going to do this for each of our six crops. So I've got those all loaded in. I'll go ahead down to my state machine uh, conditional statement and start to plug in each of those images to each of the different states. So I'm using that image function to place each image with its top left corner in the top left corner of the canvas. And since these are almost identical lines, I'm just going to copy and paste. So even though I haven't set up my navigation controls yet of jumping from one state to the next, I should still be able to play this and at least see what's in that first state of state zero, since I'm initializing this current state variable at zero. Let's go ahead and click play. Cool, that's looking good. I can see that I have not sized my canvas properly, so it's still at the default 400 by 400 pixels. Uh, let's go ahead and just take a look at what I had this size to. So. Go ahead and right click on that image so I can see I had this at 800 by 300. And I'll go ahead and fix that in my setup. So I know for sure that at the very least this first state is working as it should. Let's go ahead and come down to our key press block. And let's see if we can get these to navigate. So for now, 
I'm just going to set up a linear navigation where the right arrow takes us forward in the sequence, the left arrow takes us back. I think I might change that later, but I just want to make sure everything works at this point. And here I'm just using that shorthand uh, current state plus plus. That's the same as writing current state equals current state plus one. So when we click on the keyboard, P5 is going to be searching for that key code and it's going to say if the key code is coming from the right arrow, I'm going to add one to current state and that should jump us through the different states and I can see that's working well. Now the problem here is once we get uh, to a value of that current state variable that's larger than what we're testing for, we're not going to see anything. So I'll also add a little conditional down below just to start back at the beginning if we're going above the maximum. And now I should be able to just flip through. And for some reason that's not behaving as I expected it to. So in cases like this where you're not quite sure what's going on, it can sometimes help to print out some feedback. So I'll add a print statement where I'm combining a string of text plus the variable itself. So this way when I click on the keyboard, P5 should output what the current state is in the console. So I can see current state equals one, two, three, four, five. Hmm. And for some reason I am getting up to six even though I should be testing for it here. So what's going on there is that I have a typo. <laughs> so I left out the T in that current state variable. Uh, usually P5 will complain when you do that. I'm not sure why it's doing that here. But yeah, you just gotta be really particular with coding. So now I can see I'm cycling through each of the states. And I should be able to set up a similar function for the left arrow key. This time I'll use a slightly different code. Current state minus minus, that's the same as saying current state equals current state minus one. So we'd be going backwards through the sequence. And I should be able to see a similar thing here where I'm taking current state into negative values, which I'm not testing for in draw. So I'm only looking for zero, one, two, three, four, or five and nothing else. Um, so I can add an additional conditional here to say if current state is less than zero, to set it to five. So now I have linear sequences that will either go forward and loop back to the beginning or go backwards and loop to the end. So I should be able to go in any sequence left or right here. So that's looking good. I've got my basic functionality. I can cycle through my states. I think I'd like a slightly different behavior here where I'm keeping the increment when I hit the right arrow. So I want to keep that linear navigation as we're hitting the right arrow. When I hit the left arrow though, I want to introduce some randomness. So I'm going to just comment out this line where I am decrementing, I'm subtracting from that current state value. And I want to give this a random. So we'll set our range from zero to five. And I need to make sure that this value is a whole number, an integer. And by default, that random function is going to give us a floating point number, decimal point number. So I can convert that by just wrapping in the int function. And that's just going to basically cut off any decimal point values that are coming out of random. One little bit tricky thing with the random function. So if I give it a range of zero to five, this is going to give me values from zero up to, but not including five. So I'll never actually get the value of five. So I actually wanna set this to six. And that way I'm sure I'll get a range from zero to five and then the int function will handle things if I get something like say 5.378, it'll cut off that 0.378. All right, so now I can go from state zero to state one, state two, state three, and I'm doing that by hitting the right arrow key. Uh, when I hit the left arrow key, I'll be taken to a random. So I can see I went four, four, one, zero, four, five, three, when I'm hitting the left arrow. And when I'm hitting the right arrow, I'm just going linear. And to me, I think this structure actually makes sense uh, based on the narrative in the poem that I was referencing uh, for the illustrator composition that I'm bringing in the crops of. 
Uh, so that poem was about memory. And to me, it's kind of interesting, kind of the way that that compares to sort of an experience of life where, you know, you're sort of moving forward through time. And that's sort of happening in a way that is linear. It goes in a sequence. But when we're dealing with memory, it's much more subjective and it's much more fluid. So to me, it makes sense to have that contrast in navigation of linear versus random. So I think this is looking really good as a baseline. Uh, I want to make sure that I save my sketch 